Okay, how do you add seam allowance to your pattern and um, save it as a PDF so that then you can print it and I'll show you how to print it once you have that PDF file. So start by making sure if you are done, you know, you trued up all your seams, your pattern's perfect, it's ready to go, um, you wanna print it out, the first thing you need to do is add your seam allowance. So Clo has a tool for you to do that. So it's this little guy right here. So switch to that tool. And then I'm gonna zoom out. You can just click and drag over everything that needs a seam allowance. Now it actually did add seam allowance to all my pieces. You can see my property editor. It has width of 0.394. Um, but for some reason, even though I added seam allowance to all my pieces, only this bottom one here is selected. It's selected because it's yellow. So um, you're going to want to go back and select all of your pieces again one more time. The same tool because it has a little edit tool. And when I do that a second time, all of them are selected. It's kind of weird that it does that. I don't know why it unselects some. Anyways, if they're all selected, then you can change the seam allowance because 0.394 is kind of a weird number. So just change it to whatever you want. I like half an inch. Um, so just going to click that. Now I'm going to zoom in to see if that worked. And um, so you might be able to see, I can see my seam allowance right away. I can see the edge of my pattern, that will be my sew line, and then my seam allowance, which will be my cut line. I'm going to scooch over a bit. If you are not seeing that, make sure your seam allowance is turned on on this toggle menu. It's the second one here. I'm going to click it so it's turned off. I guess I have to be in my selection tool. Let me try that one more time. Now you can see now my seam allowance isn't showing, but I do want it to show, so I'm going to turn it back on. Um, sometimes, you know, you don't want every seam to have the exact same seam allowance. Sometimes, for example, like the hem of the sleeve, I might want that to be one inch. So I'll go back to my seam allowance tool, and I'll select just that hem. So I'm going to hold shift to get both segments, and I can see they're selected because they're yellow. And I could change the width from half an inch to one. And there we go. So now I can visually see, oh yeah, that seam allowance is a little bit longer than this. So you know, if you wanted to do the hem on all of it, just hold shift and then you can just type in at the same time. Okay, so once you're happy with your seam allowance, that's all straightened out. Um, you can go ahead and export it as a PDF. So to do that, you go File, Export, Adobe PDF. And a window pops up with some options. First you'll name it, so I'll say Clown maybe to print. You need to remember where you are saving it. I'm saving mine in my documents. And then this um, menu option is really important here. First of all, even though I'm working in inches, I'm going to leave the scale as millimeter. I'm going to leave it at 100%. I'm not going to rotate anything. So I'm not going to touch this first part. But the page margins, margins um, I do not recommend having zero. So I would add at least one inch on all of them, just so that way your pattern isn't all the way on the edge. And then your file has margins. Like Just make sure it's about one inch or more. And then things to show. Um, you can just show everything if you want, then you'll see all of this. Um, I don't think I need for my pattern, I don't know if I need any graphic outlines. I do want my internal lines though, because I have this internal line here for where I'm gonna sew elastic, so I'd like to leave internal lines. I don't think I need my base lines, but if you have notches, you might want that. I definitely want my pattern outline because that's my sew line, and sometimes I like to just see where my sew line is. My seam allowance is my cut line, so I definitely want that. Reference lines, I actually do have that in this pattern. Um, that's this kind of gray thing. That's because um, I resized it. So I don't want to see the old size. So I'm just going to uncheck reference lines for me. Under show images, we can see what that is. Um, fabric texture, I don't really need to see this polka dot print at all. So I, I, it's fine if they just print out white pattern pieces. That's good for me. And then show additional information. I do like having the pattern names on. If there's any annotations you use, that's kind of nice. That's like the little letters I know some students were using. Um, I love line lengths. I love when it says how long my line is. So that's super handy. I definitely love having my grain line on. If you use button or buttonholes, or you had some 2D measurements, um, maybe from the POM tool, I believe, um, you know, it doesn't hurt to have that on as well. Say okay, so now it's save the file. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find that file and uh, I saved it in documents and uh, clown to print. There it is, PDF. Now, if you're at home, you don't want to double click it because a lot of times when people double click it, it opens up in a random software program like today it's opening in Chrome right now. 
The problem with printing from Chrome is that it's not gonna tile all my pages that I could then tape together. It's just gonna try to like shrink it to fit. It's just not gonna work. So you've gotta say cancel. Instead, you wanna open up your file. I love doing it in Adobe Illustrator. That's my favorite, but not everyone has Adobe Illustrator. So Adobe Acrobat is also good. If you are having trouble getting Adobe Acrobat for free, just Google Adobe Acrobat Reader, and that's for free. So um, go ahead and open it in there. Let me print, make sure that's working. Ah. Okay, so we'll click open it in Adobe Acrobat. And then now I will say print. So I went file, print, actually just hit Command P. And first start to make sure you have the right paper in your printer. My printer has letter paper. So I'm gonna hit page setup. And yes, it says letter, because you know some people have legal or tabloid or who knows what. So just choose your paper that's in your printer and say, okay. Then I like to make sure it says actual size. I definitely do not want to fit this onto one piece of paper. It's going to be super teeny and tiny. So actual size. So right now, if it printed actual size, I would get a blank piece of paper because it's printing in the middle and it's not getting any of my pattern pieces. So then I have to pick poster. And so now, um, now you can see all these little tiled pages. It's going to print 180 pages right now. So you want to make sure the scale is 100% that it's not resizing it. And then I recommend the overlap be zero. Then that way you can line up your pages after they're printed out and just edge to edge. You don't have to put one paper on top of the other one. Just edge to edge and tape it together. Um, you will notice that your printer won't print to the edge, that there will be white space. That's okay. The line is still there. It just wasn't printed. So just don't, just don't worry about trying to match those black lines. Just know that part of it's gonna be blank because the printer can't print to the edge. So all you have to do is take the edge of your paper and line it up and tape it. Okay, that's really all you have to do. And then you hit print. Now it's gonna print 180 pages, that's a lot. So maybe when I set this up, maybe I didn't really need to print you know, um, the three on the side. I could just cut two of the first three and that would save a lot of paper too. So I'll say cancel because I'm not gonna print this right now. Now I'm gonna open this also in Illustrator just so you can see how to print it in Illustrator. Um, Say, I don't care about the font, so I'll just say close. I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna hit Command Zero, just so my board is centered. Now, I recommend turning on View, Show Print Tiling. There it is. So right now, um, if I were to print, it's gonna print one page, and it's gonna print inside this box, so I would get a blank paper. So I'm gonna say File, Print, and first thing I'll do is change my media size and I'll make sure it matches what's in my printer. I have US letter in my paper, in my printer. Um, so again, if I hit print right now, it's gonna print nothing, a white piece of paper. You can see it on the artboard. So then the next step I need to do is under scaling, I need to choose this drop down menu, and I need to change to tile, tile full pages. And boom, look how many more pages it's gonna print out now. Um, now it's gonna print, does it say how many? Probably somewhere and I just can't see it. Um, anyways. Okay, so um, you can even do tile range if you don't want all of them. So it looks like it's 162 pages. I'll uncheck that, so it just prints all of them. Um, here, let's make sure the overlap is also at zero. Again, it's so nice just to butt the edges next to each other and tape them, not worry about overlapping. Um, here, what's cool about Illustrator, it has a skip blank artboards page. That's nice, so it won't print all those blank ones as well. I'm just, if I was ready to go, I would say print, but right now I'm gonna say done. And here you can actually see um, what's gonna be printed and where. So page four, you'll tape that to five and six. You'll also tape four to 22. You can, so it's kind of nice having this to help you put the puzzle pieces back together. They do print in order, so it, but it'll do one, you know, all the way to 13, and then come down, it'll do like each row and then go to the next row. Um, so this is nice to see too, because um, once you are in Illustrator, um, let's see if this, sometimes you have to use the white arrow and click and drag and delete this weird outline thing. So I'm gonna hit delete, delete twice to get rid of that. And I use the white arrow to do it. And then after I do it, I can click and drag and then I can click and drag and move it. So I'm like, you know what, I don't wanna waste page one and three. I'm just gonna move this over here. And then you, like, I think I'm also gonna move you like right here and you I'll move here, right there. And then this stuff, I'll just say cut two, so I don't need you, and I don't need you, I'll just delete you, because I'll just say cut two. And then I could change my artboard right here, and I can bring this guy in, just say, oh, we only need this many pages. And here, so 
So that's a little bit better. So now I'm only going to be printing 40 pages, but all these are going to be blank down here. So um, they shouldn't print, but if they did, I could always put it back in my printer. So that's a little bit more manageable. So now I can go Command P. Oh, I should actually, yeah, oh yeah, it's ready. Um, and I would just say print. You could see what it would print. So that's pretty helpful. Um, one last thing, if you're still watching and you want to know, okay, well now how much fabric do I buy? You can go to Clo and um, and this is this version of Clo here. You know, it has all my pattern pieces, it's not just half of it. And you go up here to the top right corner where it says simulation, and you change to print layout. Here you go. And then here's our fabric. Um, if I click on this fabric, it's our polka dot fabric, silk knit jersey, and um, the width is 44 inches. So figure out how wide your fabric is. If you're shopping at Joann's, it's probably 44 inches. But if you went up to the fashion district and got some other fabric that's 60 inches, you can change it, you know, and um, make it 60 inches wide. So I'll go ahead and click 44 for right now. And then all you have to do is click this button right here. It'll reset a default arrangement and it put all your pattern pieces here. Um, you can move them around too if you want, um, but I do like just the default one. I think the computer does a good job to try to save you as much fabric as possible. Um, so it looks like right now they are suggesting I buy 2.48 yards. So two and a half yards is what I would buy. I wonder if I did find wider fabric that's 60 inches. I'm gonna click the reset button right now. Oh wow, I save almost a whole yard of fabric. I only have to buy um, yard, well just a little bit more than a yard and a half. So I would probably buy a yard and three fourths just to be safe. So if you can get wider fabric, you don't have to buy as much of it usually. So, um, so it's good to know how wide your fabric is. But if you're not sure, just pick 44. That's always the safest. And, and then again, just the reset button. Now this guy has black fabric too. So up here, there's a little tab and then I can click the black fabric. Again, I can also say how wide it is and then I can click just the default thing. I can zoom out and I can pan. So this guy says 0.72 yards. So I would buy three fourths yards, 0.75 and I think I would be good. So that's how you know how much fabric to buy. All right, I hope this video was helpful and I hope you guys are sewing up your stuff.